Hey folks, bit of a vlog style video for this one because I've had a bit of a nightmare. I'd hope to get you a video out this week for how to upgrade Proxmox from version 8 to 9, but during that process it screwed up and I couldn't make the video. Now I know the reason why that probably happened, it's because I have a bit of an exotic setup. If you remember, I've got the three MS-01s and I've also got on the back of that the Thunderbolt ring which acts as kind of a Ceph backhaul network. Now there's a number of things you need to customize to get that working and I suspect that one of those things caused the update to break. I wasn't actually able to work out what caused it. I think it was probably the FRR, the fabric routing. But regardless to say, I wanted to talk you through the process of what happened and then how I recovered it and ultimately how I now have my whole cluster rebuilt. So all of my Proxmox nodes are now running Proxmox version 9. And I also took it upon myself to rebuild my Kubernetes cluster. So I've gone from version, I think it was 1.3 to the latest 1.33. And I did all of that basically within four or five hours, something like that and I avoided no downtime for the rest of the family, which was much appreciated. So if you're interested, I'm gonna walk you through what happened, how I overcame it, and now where I'm at, which actually includes me going further than just a rebuild of the software environment itself, but I'm now replacing some of the hardware as well, because as I said before, I wanna move now over to the Unify network and check all of that sort of stuff out. It's been way too long since I've not tried that. Now, as you can see here, I've got my nice shiny new environment all running on version nine. But what actually happened? Well, I was recording the video, I was following all of the good practice and applying all the experience that I've had in the past. But when it actually came to the bit I couldn't prepare for, it didn't work, the upgrade failed. So I'm gonna talk you through some good steps first, some good practice of what to do. And then hopefully if ever anything goes wrong like it did for me, you can at least recover from it. So the first thing I do for everything is I always back up my virtual machines. I do that using Proxmox backup service, which you can see here. So this basically backs up all my virtual machines over to that instance. That stores it on the NAS and therefore I've always got a copy of it remote to the cluster that if anything goes wrong I can recover from which is kind of what I used here for some of the virtual machines that I've got. Now after I would backed everything up I was in a good spot to start the upgrade process. I went through I updated all the nodes to the latest version prior to version 9 and I even went through and updated Ceph as per the instructions. Now, what I did do was I migrated all my virtual machines from the Abaddon node, and that was gonna be my first node that I did. I didn't wanna upgrade everything in one go, just in case things broke. Plus, I also had a number of things running within the cluster at the same time anyway. So, with everything running on the Dawn and Sanguinius nodes, I went to redo the Abaddon node, but it never came back online. Now I think that's because in the past I've spoken to you about that Proxmox Ceph ring uh, using the Thunderbolts. I am gonna try that again on this new cluster, but I think for something that's basically on the bleeding edge anyway, in terms of pushing the hardware, it's not officially supported, etc. I think there's probably something that fell foul there. But once I knew that I couldn't get that back online and I went to the Abaddon node, I tried to connect to it it wasn't connecting via SSH, and unfortunately I'd blacklisted the iGPU, so I couldn't even connect into the node to see what was happening via a monitor, keyboard, etc. I was just getting nothing out of it. I could possibly have added, say, an external GPU or taken the drive out and had a look in another machine, but I was already at the point where I've probably got a broken installation. The chances of something going wrong in the future are going to be pretty high. So I decided I'll do the nuclear approach. I'm going to rebuild my cluster. So again, I made sure everything was backed up to Proxmox PBS. And then I basically went through systematically and replaced each node. So with the Abaddon node already down, these two were still on version 8. I fresh installed Abaddon with the latest ISO 9 image. And then I began the process of shutting down virtual machines on here, adding PBS to both of these new environments. So I had the new nine cluster and I had the old eight, and you can actually mount the same PBS to, this, uh, to two different environments. And I was able to shut one down, 
and then migrate it across. And obviously because none of the networks changed, all of the IPs, the DNS records, all of that sort of stuff, and MAC addresses, all of that just worked. And I also made sure that configured it exactly the same. So all the networks, all the hardware, etc. down here, all of these were identical again. So everything just sort of magically worked and popped back up. After that one, I basically did the same for the other two nodes and shut both of those down and eventually rebuilt the cluster. And then I had everything back up and running minus my Kubernetes instance. So then it was just a case of going through and like I've shown on my videos, I just created the cloud init first. I then created six virtual machines. I then installed K3S using the script that I've got. I was gonna do RKE2, but I just went with K3S. So I think it's a good balance for our home lab. I played with RKE2, it's great, it's awesome for production, but there's too many headaches at our home lab. So I got all of that set up, and then I basically spent an hour or so running the various Helm installs, kubectls with the manifest files, and getting all my services back up and running. Now, with everything done, all freshly set up, and most of this stuff still all backed up, I decided now is probably the best time to actually sort out my hardware. If you've seen my tours before, you know that they're an absolute nightmare. Most of my lab is just what I like to call a lived in lab. Most of the time I just plug it in, I get it working and never bother to actually go back and tidy everything up. So now I'm deciding to strip the rack clean and get rid of all the old redundant cables that I don't need. I'm gonna rearrange it so it makes a lot more sense. I do wanna try and have a look at a better UPS as well because I waste a lot of space at the bottom of the rack. I would like a rack mounted UPS, anyone listening? Um, that would be really good. This is also going to be the perfect time now to migrate over my Unify kit. So that will be in a future video. Anyway, that was just a short ramble of what I've been up to, um, how I spent a day rebuilding my cluster. But safe to say, I think I'm pretty much back up and running. There's just a little few niggles that there's often some changes I've made in the background and I forgot to document. So do go and document, don't be like me. But I'll figure those out and I'll get everything up and running. I'm about 95% of the way there. And so now here we are. Don't worry, the cables aren't tidied up just yet. I've actually got some new cables that are the right length on order. So I will be finishing that off. But if you look at the top now, you can see that I've got the new Unify switch with the Ether Lightning at the top. I've then in the middle, I've got the AG switch. I already had the AG switch, but that's now plugged into the UDM Pro Max. Below that is the freshly cleaned and serviced MSO1 cluster that I built. Um, a clean NAS below that that's been more than thankful for getting rid of all the dust. And then below that, the bit that actually took the most time, I've got the HL15, the Home Lab 45 drives machine. That's not currently operational. In a future video, I will be migrating from my existing NAS onto that device. But actually just getting that machine in was a lot of fun. The actual rack itself was too short, so the depth wasn't big enough for the rails to fit because that's actually on rails. And I had to basically do that all myself and redo it, and that required me to take most of this equipment off the rack, which if ever you put stuff onto a rack, you know how much of a pig it is to take it off and then put it all back on. But it did allow me to do some much needed cable work. It is actually, although the picture doesn't show it, it's much tidier around the back of the rack itself. So I'm gonna do a full overview and a video of that process of me putting this together. And I also do wanna cover my first impressions of migrating from OpenSense onto the the Unify ecosystem. 90% of it has been excellent and I'm really impressed with what, well, how much they've improved since the time I used it about five years ago. So there are a few things though I still wish were different, but on the whole, really positive and I'm gonna share my thoughts with you in a future video. Anyway, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I thought I'd make this one a bit more lighthearted and sorry I haven't got the video out that I planned for the upgrade process. I might come onto that maybe in the next version. But let me know what you think, whether you think that I've made a good job, whether you think I'm on the right lines and I promise you I will tidy up these cables. Anyway, enjoy your weekend. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.